Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Genesis and I have another reading for you that I did not uh, anticipate doing until a minute ago. So if you caught my other video, I was talking about, oh, there we go, faith and home and gratitude as a practice of reception. Um, and right after that, I, I felt like, or rather I knew I needed to do, needed to do another video. The one I started, oh yikes, was not correct. The judge just flew out with the queen. I love it. This is the archetype deck. I'm going to be using probably three decks and we are going to have three different piles, okay? So, let's get started. I will do my best to keep this pretty short. This is just goddess guidance today and I am not using the goddess deck that I have. I already have the goddesses in mind that we are working with. Um, pardon me. So we already know what's happening there and I will tell you that in just a moment also. Actually, I won't tell you because there's going to be three piles. If you feel like you should be receiving guidance from more than one pile, you're more than welcome to. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to let folks go ahead and pick. And I promise I will try to check timestamps and put them on here before I post this. I'll do my best. Okay, so without further ado, let's hop into our pick a card goddess guidance, okay? So this goddess guidance is specifically for, oh, for again... Um, my femmes and people tapping into their feminine energy or just, again, whoever is drawn to it right now, uh, whatever it is that you need to be expressing to have come out at this time to make the most for um, this full moon or just this time period in general, it doesn't feel specific to November. It feels more like these last couple days up to the full moon, but you could use this guidance going forward, so please take it as it resonates with you. Again, we have three goddesses coming up and they are all all coming through very clearly um I was really trying to get away from doing collective readings because it's kind of like there's so much going on right now you really need to just trust your discernment but for those of you who don't read or who cannot read for yourselves don't feel comfortable doing it if you're in a position that you can't afford to get a divination um I want this to kind of function as a stand-in for you right now please go ahead also feel free to check out the Taurus full moon guidance video also okay my three goddesses you know who you are may i please have one card from each deck for each of you Um, I'll have a second camera for you guys, I promise. <laughs> okay. They're coming up quick. Not reading from the bottom of the deck. I will have a second camera for you guys. But right now, we just have the one. So I promise I will show you what cards I'm doing, or what cards I'm using. So much I'm gonna say right now these are also beginner intermediate and um, master level so if you know you're at the beginning of your journey please take the beginning message if you know that you're a little more in the middle of your journey take the middle message and if you feel very comfortable you got your ritual shit prepped and planned for Halloween and I don't mean like little ritual shit like I mean like you you know your shit like you've been doing it take the third one um, I feel like there's good shit coming through right now. I'm actually very grateful for it to happen. I got a sign on the wall that says the witch is in or the witch is out. There's that magician. This magician is flying out all the tarot decks that I have. 
And it's so black girl magic. Look at it. Look at her. I love it. It's a beautiful card. Anyway. Anyway. Final shuffle. If you picked pile number one, we're going to start now, and I will keep it quick, I swear. Pile number one is assigned to the goddess Lilith, or rather Lilith assigned herself to this pile. Um, so A, I want you to bring in Lilith energy. Lilith is more of a maiden archetype in my mind, although she can be both crone and mother. And this, in this reading, in this sense, she's serving as very strong made in energy. Lilith is known as a disruptor. She is known to, you know, bring chaos just because there are so many controversial opinions about her, whether or not she is actually actively wreaking havoc on somebody. Lilith is one of my, if not my, go-to. I love her to bits. She's absolutely amazing. So this is very strong energy. It's very self-advocating energy. It's very headstrong energy kind of volatile so be mindful when working with her but she is phenomenal and she's very protective if you feel called, called to work with her if you wanted to work with her over time take this as a sign to go ahead and put a prayer in her ear the tarot for her is the ace of swords sorry for the glare the ring light's not on the different light is on but anyway uh ace of swords is the tarot for her the flame which i believe is card number 51 in the archetype deck and leap the universe will catch you and that's from the work your light spirit oracle so again i that couldn't be more lilith than it is leap the universe will catch you okay go ahead and take that jump what is it that you are trying to accomplish what are you trying to make happen take the first step take the first step even if it's a super small one take that first step that flame energy is there to support you i will read that one in a minute the Ace of Swords energy is there to support you. That's all the potential of clarity of mind. That's all the potential of communication. Be mindful when you come up uh, upon conflicts at this time. Go ahead and take a new approach. If you've had an old approach for a long time, time to clear it out. Cut it away. Invite that Swords energy in. Really think about the King of Swords or the Queen of Swords who are making decisions from a healthy detachment, who are not letting their emotions rule everything. This full moon is going to be emotional, in my opinion, even though it's in earthy Taurus. We have the election coming up. We have Mercury entering its post-retrograde direct, or its post-retrograde directness, or its post-shadow period, whatever. Um, I think Mars retrograde is still happening for another 10 days. So shit's a little icky out there. Be mindful. The flame to me also is bringing a light. So before I even hit the book, the flame is bringing a light, okay? Light that fire. Light that fire. Let's move. It's Scorpio season. I know Scorpio is a water sign, but it still feels fiery to me often. So let's go. Deep waters. Make it happen. If you pick the middle pile, which is at 835, if you pick the middle pile, you have Sekhmet. Sorry. The base card for that is Trust the Niggle, which is so weird. I, I would always say a nagging feeling. But anyway. Trust your nagging feeling. Trust your gut. So Sekhmet is uh, an Egyptian goddess. She's known for having like a, her red side and her blue side kind of being raging and being calm. Uh, one of the stories about her is that she was created basically as a personification of Ra's rage. So Sekhmet is very protective also, but she helps us deal with the stuff that we're transmuting. She helps us transmute that energy for ourselves. I worked with her a lot also. I love Sekhmet to pieces. Trust that nagging feeling because you are going through a shift if you have this coming up right now. I want you to trust your gut and literally hunt out what it is that it's time for you to be changing. Um, and also just be opening your intuition uh, is one of the feelings that I get. The Bardo, which is card number 50, comes out. And it did initially come out reverse. The Bardo is a Tibetan, like, it, it's in Tibetan stuff and it's a space i'm sorry i messed that up completely but it's like a dead space 
um, is my understanding. So it's not necessarily death, but it, it's just this kind of emptiness space or like a void space. So forgive me if I'm like explaining that poorly, but A, with it coming out upside down, I feel like there's something that's been ignored. It came out reversed because there's something that has not been addressed that's stopping you from progressing forward. So one, wherever you have sadness, wherever you have rage, wherever you feel like you have not been loved, you have not been appreciated, you have not been uplifted, check into that space for me and see what's going on, okay? Uh, and flip that around so that you can actually look at it. There's nothing wrong with being in a space of emptiness, but what's wrong is letting things stay stagnant. The Five of Pentacles echoes that to me, okay? And in a lot of decks that I've had, that window in the background of the Five of Pentacles is broken, and oftentimes when I read that, I'll say, you know, there's some progress happening. There's a breakthrough. It might be painful. Five is associated with change. It's like a small death, but there's progress happening. In this case, when it came out on that top of that reverse bardo, I really feel like there's some some motion that needs to happen that is not. Um, that said, proceed with caution. You might be being stagnant for a reason. Don't let this reading be the end all be all take your own account take your own situation into account obviously take this with a grain of salt if like it doesn't feel like it super applies to you um but just be mindful just take a look at why certain things might be hindering you if they're within yourself because like it's actually you or if there are outside circumstances and make sure you're not being hasty in a decision that that will actually you know not benefit you in the future the way you think it will um of course, though, with that five being present, when we flip the bardo right side up and we trust that nagging feeling, now we're starting to make something happen. So this time is all about shifting your perspective, taking stock of what's really good for you, what's really healthy for you, what is actually safe for you, um, what's going to challenge you moving forward, and allowing all those things to come together to help you actually bring change to your external life. Remember, pentacles are our suit of material things, of um, creation, money, homes. So you want to be changing in a positive direction with that five of pentacles. Moving right along, I swear to God, I'm keeping it short and sweet. <sighs> we have Isis. Isis is the final pile, and I'll be honest to say that I was surprised to see her come through or to feel her come through because I actually have not worked, with, she said that you know of, so I have not worked with Isis extensively, um, or at least in this lifetime, according to that message. So this pile is the Isis pile. Isis is the queen mother. If you know about any Madonna and child iconography, that is really based off of Isis with Horus. She is the OG witch okay she was that i don't even really like the term witch too much it's very colonizery over the years but she was she was the og magician the sorceress that goddess bro magic wasn't even her thing initially but because of the different circumstances that happened in her life she took the power that she could and made it hers right we know that she's a goddess of life and death because of resurrecting Osiris all the way to the point where she basically created a new phallus for him when that was the only piece missing. That's the life-giving piece on a man. She made all that life happen. Out of her grief, out of her despair, out of her tenacity, she transmuted her energy to bring something else forth. Women are creators. Feminine energy is creative energy. So again, you don't have to be a woman for this goddess guidance to hit. All of us have feminine energy. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't ever really feel like woman. I've always considered myself non-binary, but I'm a very feminine person. But anyway, the first card is protection. That moon looks like a dark moon up there. Okay, there's a circle of figures holding their arms like this, facing outward. Actually, a lot of them are facing in, and then the one at the front is shielding and facing outward. So it says, call back your power, cut the cords, soul retrieval. We all know that. Oh, good God. <clears throat> Maybe we don't all know that. So um, <laughs> Halloween is also Samhain, right? It's uh, the Celtic or Gaelic New Year. Um, it was always, for me, a personal like witchcraft or conjure New Year. Uh, it, it's the time when the veil is thinnest, it's right around Dia de los Muertos, it's right around All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Pardon me. So it's very understood that this time of year is just a thin veil year. And if 
you are also very sensitive or paying attention to this shit, you'll know that 2020 has been a thin veil year. I don't care what anybody says. Spirit's been <laughs> active all 2020. So as we hit this time period, I want you, the people that are really adept, you people that are really doing your shit, to please practice extra caution and extra precaution. I just had a flash of stopping at Isis's temple at night. So if you do work with Isis, if you work with any of those deities, um, make your offerings and stop at her temple for protection. If you can just kind of like astral travel there, whatever, do your thing. Um, or, or create a space of protection. Protection work is heavily counter, I'm feeling protection work being heavily poured forth or suggested. Um, the other thing here is that calling back your, your power, cutting the cord, soul retrieval, that part of the card is also spot on. This is a time of high magic. This is a, a, I mean, a powerful, strong time. A lot of practitioners are going to be working spells, working rites, working rituals okay a lot there's a lot floating around in the air i want you to call all your stuff back prior to this full moon i want you to call all of your power back whether or not you gave it away on purpose whether or not you know you gave it away call all of that back so that way come the 30th the 29th because it's already the 27th the 28th i don't know time isn't real come the 30th 29th or the 30th you can be writing that shit down on paper burning it and releasing it Okay, and then mix it all that ashes up with some salt and bury it in the ground on this earthy ass Taurus full moon and let the earth have it to be made new. I'm gonna need y'all to be calling your power back. All of my practitioners, please, because 2021 is not coming to play. And I really, truly, truly feel like spirit is not coming to play either if any of the pieces of you that you need are left back in another timeline because you did not get the message from one of the 950,000 million people putting them out there that's on you spirit's gonna be frustrated because you're gonna be frustrated because we're in a lock-in zone right now whatever it is that you are working on baby you're locking it in you're locking it in 2020 is the start of the decade the decade and we all know it's bigger than that anyway so all of my practitioners all of you out here trying to really make these moves, and honestly, even the ones that are not practitioners, y'all that hit the beginner pile, if you suck around, you are locking in right now. It doesn't mean it's permanent, but it's going to be really hard to get out of because you chose this timeline for the decade and people have been giving you that warning all year. So please call back your power. The next card for Isis's pile is Apocalypsis, also from that archetype deck. Apocalypsis, which I think is like number... 74 yeah 74 so almost the end of the deck there might be if not the end of that deck apocalypsis is the end the apocalypse right um which doesn't mean in this case that it is like the end in a gloom and doom way to me it's more like that space one of the other cards in the deck that i wish was out right now is called animal mundi and the con the thought there is accept all reject none and that's the feeling that I'm getting with this. I just caught 1818, this apocalypsis. This is the space of the dark womb. This is the dark mother void. This is Isis in her grief deciding what to do. This is the moment that the raging storm all of a sudden becomes the eye of the storm one more time. And it, it's the new one. It's the one that says, you shouldn't have fucked with me. Because now I had to, to take myself apart and to regather the pieces. And the calm that you see now is not the same one as before. And that's the overall mood, okay? The divine feminine is doing that. The divine masculine is getting ready to do that. I don't know how I know that, but it's like the divine feminine is prepping that way. A lot of people have been on their shit. Prepare for the storm. Be on your shit. It is a fertile time. This this eye in the center of this card is really catching me. It's watching everything happen. Can you have a little bit of cool detachment for the next couple days? If you've been doing your work and setting up, I need you to take a day to rest before you go into ritual on Halloween, before you go into ritual at this time. The final card for the Isis pile is the Four of Swords reversed. Please don't throw yourself on a sword. If you look at it this way, she's going to leave a comfortable bed to throw herself on a sword because she thinks she needs to be working more with the sky looks blue or somewhere else. Eh, eh, eh. Don't do it. 
flip that upside down and let yourself rest for a second. Of course, fours talk about stability. They're a masculine number. We're talking about bringing structure. It is a four year. It's an emperor year. We have the suit of swords here, which is also a masculine suit. It has to do, again, with conflicts, with clarity, with communication. Um, in this case, the four, you know, you see a woman laying back, and even though none of the swords are actively touching her or in in play in the card, they're up against the wall, they're still facing points down, and she's clearly not resting. She's laying with her hand over her face. Or maybe she's trying to rest, but she's going through something mentally. This card was upside down, so please don't overthink. That's really what I meant by don't throw yourself on a sword because you think you're not doing enough. Do not overthink. Do not overthink. Please do not let the flux of energies in the air right now cloud your sight, cloud your emotions, cloud your will, cloud your understanding. Okay? There's a lot happening. There's a lot out there. Heart space is where your eyeballs need to be. Gratitude, reception, active joy, rest, all that good shit, perspective checking, that's where you need to be. If you know what your ritual is, and you know what you've been planning for, then then release. Take stock of where you are, release whatever you don't need, take a day to rest and reset. Um, that's it. That's it. I love you guys so much, and I hope that this was helpful. I hope you have a great day. Mwah.